Hello and welcome to Change the Lives for Good. I'm your host, Greg Kepferly, CEO of Catholic Charities of Santa Clara County. Immigrants today are living in fear, fear of deportation and the uncertainty of the enhanced enforcement of the country's immigration laws. What should people do, not just immigrants who may not have papers, but also their family members, their friends, coworkers, and businesses? How do we react to this? How do we be prepared when ICE comes knocking? Today, I'm gonna to talk with Mina Churia, Hi. who's an immigration attorney with Catholic Charities Immigration Legal Services. Hi, Mina. Hi, thank you for having me. Great to have you on. So we're gonna watch a series of videos of when ICE comes knocking at the door of a social service agency, uh, somebody's home, um, when there's a traffic stop with a police officer, and um, maybe at someone's workplace. And before we watch these videos, what would you recommend our viewers do to be prepared and, and how, to, how to use these? We would recommend people to involve everyone living in the household, be it children, um, be it roommates, spouses, grandparents, sometimes it's extended family, sometimes it's just friends or, um, or roommates, to watch together, talk about them, and after finishing um, watching them, maybe practice. Okay, so we're going to start by watching a video. We're going to start by watching a video first of when ICE comes knocking at the door of a social service agency. Hi, how can I help you? Hi, I'm here to investigate some of your clients. All right, what government agency are you from, and can I see your badge, please? I'm from Immigration Customs Enforcement. Let me escort you one of our conference rooms and somebody will be with you shortly. Can I get you something to drink? No, thank you. Hello? Hi, Oscar. There's an immigration officer here at the agency. I've escorted her to conference room A. Can you please come and talk to her? Yes, I'll be right there. Thank you. Hi, can you make copies of this? Sure, I'll need about five minutes. Okay. Carla, there's an ICE agent here. I'd like there to be someone else with me when I talk to them to document the visit. Will you come with me? You got it. Hi, I'm Oscar, the CEO of this agency. Is there anything I can help you with? Yes, I'm here to investigate some of your clients. Do you have a warrant with this individual's name on it? Yes, I do. This is not a proper warrant, and I cannot let you search these offices without one. Also, I cannot disclose any client information without a proper warrant or subpoena. Is there anything else we can do for you? No, that's it. Please allow me to escort you out. You just witnessed an ICE agent enter an agency. Every agency should have a protocol in place. The protocol should include procedures for site personnel and senior executives. Remember to take the ICE agent to a private area. Do not disclose any information regarding clients or allow them to search the building without a valid warrant. Senior executives should gather information about the government agency as well as the agent and the reason for the visit. Make sure to record all information. So Mina, watching this as um, a social service provider, knowing that ICE could come knocking at the door, um, what are some lessons that you think people need to take away from this? The video, and thank you so much to our team at, at the Catholic Charities Immigration Legal Services for putting this together. Everyone in the video was very calm. Um, and I think you can um, achieve that by practicing. So if there are concerns, um, the, the agency serves the immigrant community. You have people coming in the lobby all the time um, asking questions. You don't want people to get nervous. You should um, um, provide as little information as possible in the lobby and just like the uh, receptionist here in the video did, escort the person to a private area and then communicate with the executive team in private as much as possible so that whoever is in the lobby doesn't you know, get anxious, um, you know, afraid and maybe start running or you know, lose, lose their, their cool, their calm. So I think practice uh, helps achieve that. And uh, you know, sometimes in the, in the spur of the moment, people really like to be helpful, especially if it's law enforcement, right? They, they want to be a good citizen and, of course. and respectful and uh, you know, yes, officer, I want to help you. Um, at the same time, there's confidential information that yes. client information can't be shared because of confidentiality reasons or HIPAA reasons, depending upon the code that, that, that is in place. Um, so 
in, in terms of a social service provider, um, what are they obligated to share? They should, sh they should not share anything if possible. Um, and, um, and the executive person in this, uh, the executive member of this, uh, in this video uh, rightly requested a warrant. And we do distribute warrants, examples of what a, a, a legit warrant looks like. But even if you're not aware of that, you should avoid an, um, um, disclosing any personal confidential information of clients, even of employees, actually, until, you are, until you're counseled by the agency's counsel attorney that it's this is the right thing and in compliance with the law to do. Okay, so always <laughs> as it, always check with your attorney. That's yes. number one as a, as a business, of as course. a social service provider. The other is never release confidential information, information. Um, without, uh, without consultation first with that attorney. And, and my understanding is that there are different types of ICE warrants and subpoenas. Some may apply and some may not uh, really apply. That's that's correct, and um, sometimes they call a warrant something that's just a, a document from an immigration agency saying that a certain person is being, uh, you know, uh, put in removal deportation proceedings. That doesn't mean that you can go to anyone's, um, you know, public space and and ask start asking people around where's this person and you're, someone would be obligated to actually give that information away under any circumstances. So uh, that's different. So a nice warrant where it's just a, a, a document that says this person is being placed in proceedings is one document that doesn't you know, give authority to ICE to come to an agency and ask for private information. But uh, um, a, a warrant signed by a judge that describes the a exact address, the name of the person, and uh, the, the, um, uh, the um, place where it's allowed and authorized to search, then that would be appropriate warrant. Okay, so even if there is that appropriate warrant, you should still consult with your attorney Agreed. before right. giving up that information. Of course, right. correct. Because we're not experts in that, and you need someone to take a look and see if, if that warrant is properly done or if, if there may be a deficiency in it, then you, you would be breaking the law by, by giving away confidential information um, and not having um, any document to support that, the release. Right. Okay. So it's not that uh, a, a social service agency is not cooperating, but they're cooperating within their rights as, as an organization, uh, rights as un, uh, uh, under the Constitution. Correct, right? yes. Yeah, okay, very good. So the second situation we're gonna look at is not from a social service side, but the side of a family that is uh, an immigrant family, and oftentimes many of these families may have members who some are uh, citizens, some may be legal permanent residents, and some may be without papers. And so what happens when ICE comes knocking at the door of your home? Alicia, can you answer the door? Sure, Dad. One second. Who is it? This is Immigration Customs Enforcement. Can you open this door? Dad, it's ICE. Should I open it? No, no. Hang on. I'll be right there. Okay. Hi, can I help you? Hi, can you open this door? I need to ask you a few questions. Do you have a warrant? Yes, I do. It's okay, go ahead and sit down. Is this warrant for my arrest? Does it have my name and is it signed by a judge to search this house? If so, please slide it under the door so I can look at it. I'm sliding the warrant under the door. Please sign this paper. This is not a proper warrant. It does not have my name and it's not signed by a judge. I do not wish to speak with you, answer your questions, or hand you any documents based on my Fifth Amendment rights under the United States Constitution. I do not give you permission to enter my home based on my Fourth Amendment rights under the United States Constitution unless you have a warrant to enter, signed by a judge or a magistrate, with my name on it, that you slide under the door. I do not give you permission to search any of my belongings based on my Fourth Amendment rights. I choose to exercise my constitutional rights. Goodbye. You just witnessed an ICE agent at your door. What do you do? First thing to remember is to stay calm and do not open the door when ICE comes knocking. ICE will sometimes identify themselves as the police. So make sure to ask them what agency they are from. Ask for a warrant. Make sure that the warrant has your name and that it is signed by a judge. Now, if the warrant does not have your name and it is not signed by a judge, hand them the red card stating your rights. Always keep the red card in a place that's easy to access. If the warrant does have your name and it is signed by a judge, Step outside, closing the door behind you, making sure not to expose others in the house. Remember, do not say anything or sign anything without first consulting with an attorney. 
So Amina, this is a very real situation to thousands of people around the country that ICE is actually coming knocking at their door. Uh, sometimes they're knocking at the door uh, thinking that they have the right person. Sometimes there's somebody else in the house that may not be uh, the person that they're looking for, but also may be uh, without papers and, and be caught up in, in, in that. Um, as, as you see this video, what are some other things that you would recommend families do? What I loved, uh, besides bringing up the fact that everyone's calm, people are not, you know, panicking, and the young people, in the, usually the first people to go to a door when someone knocks is the kids. And we always recommend to practice with your children to don't show up at the door and open the door without first, you know, letting an adult figure out before opening the door who is behind the door and why they are there. So that was a great example. Um, um, and uh, the, other, uh, the other thing that shows up in the video is that red card that the father in the, in the video um, picks up from his coffee table yeah. and reads the constitutional rights, his constitutional rights from. Those are available everywhere and we recommend people keeping them um, handy. Um, next to the door, you know, where you keep your car key so that if something like this were to happen, you have it handy, you don't have to scramble and think, where's that red card, what do I say now? Uh, obviously, you're going to be, you know, anxious. So um, no, having something to read from gives you a, a, a sense of, of calm, of purpose, of doing the right thing. Okay, good. So in, in the video, the, uh, the person answering the door, the father and the family, uh, quoted both his uh, constitutional rights under the Fourth Amendment and the Fifth Amendment. Yes. And so I think a lot of Americans don't realize that uh, immigrants are actually covered under the U.S. Constitution. Can you help us understand yes, that? Yes, the, the U.S. Constitution does not specify that only U.S. citizens or people born in this country or not with specific status does not differentiate between um, people when they say that, when it says that these are your rights, that everyone's rights living um, in the United, on the United States, in the United States. Um, so it's important for people to know that whether they're a U.S. citizen or not, they have the right to remain silent when approached by immigration. Um, um, and they should exercise those rights. Um, and I cannot stress enough the importance of exercising your rights, whether you have a status in the U.S. or not, because whenever the government or a government agency or law enforcement or immigration customs enforcement violates, even if they violate those rights, and you think, well, some immigrants think, well, they're going to burst into my home anyway. So, you know, might as well avoid breaking the door. Where well, actually it's important what, if they do it in accordance with the law, with the warrant, or if they do it in violation of your rights. If they do it in violation of your rights, your attorney can later challenge the way this was carried out in front of a judge. And you may get, um, the person whose rights were violated may get more protection. Um, so, so it's important even if you maybe don't have that much faith in, in, well, what if, and I say that, and what if they don't follow what I say, or I exercise my rights and the result is not like in the video. You should still remember to exercise your rights because there are benefits to doing that later down the road. Yeah, so it's, it also seems that, that um, with the, the situation of making sure you know your rights with, with law enforcement in the U.S., that people who may come from other countries may have a very different experience of law enforcement. Correct, correct. From coming from their countries, they may, they don't, many times they, they flee persecution from exactly from the government. So they, any government figure will make them, you know, un, feel like they can't trust it. Mm -hmm. um, but the things are a little bit different, in, <laughs> sometimes more, a little bit more than a little bit different in this country. So, so we're trying to educate people with, with these vid videos and they, it's, they're, they're modeling a, a, a behavior that we recommend and that is safe. And we always say um, never be in the way of law enforcement, always be respectful, um, but at the same time feel empowered to say I don't want to talk to you, I want to talk to my attorney, I, w I don't want to sign this and I'm not, I'm not giving you permission to come into my home. Right. And, and in doing that, you're not disobeying the law. No. In fact, you're upholding the highest law, which is the Constitution yes. <laughs> and your constitutional yes. rights, yes. Right, which is wonderful. So let's take a, a third example of uh, this time not ice knocking at the door, but uh, someone is in a traffic stop by the local police. And what happens if the local police stop you while you're driving your car?
Hi, do you know why we pulled you over today? No, ma'am, I don't. Because you ran a red light. Can I see your license and registration, please? Yeah, my license and registration are in my backpack. May I get them? Yes, you can. Here's my license and registration. What's your name? Mario. Mario, where are you from? Sir, I asked you a question. Why aren't you answering? Where are you from? I have a right to remain silent. Well, then we have no other choice but to arrest you and hold you for the immigration authorities to investigate you. Actually, since San Jose is a sanctuary city, we cannot arrest Mario because he did not commit a serious criminal offense. But then the immigration authorities won't be able to investigate him. That's right. As a sanctuary city, we can't hold Mario based on a minor traffic violation. He did not commit a serious criminal offense. I see. Sir, here's your traffic ticket. It has information on your court date. Okay, thank you. You just witnessed a police stop within a sanctuary county. In Sanctuary County, police officers cannot act as ICE agents. Therefore, when asking for a driver's license, make sure to provide it for them, regardless if it's a California driver's license or an AB60. Remember, driving without a license is against the law and can lead to criminal offense. When a police officer or highway patrol issues you a traffic ticket, you do need to sign it in order to confirm that you received the citation. Now, if it's a serious criminal offense, they can arrest you. Things to remember, living in a Sanctuary County or city does not protect immigrants from being deported if accused, arrested, or convicted of a serious criminal offense. If you are arrested or detained, do not sign anything without first consulting with an attorney. So <laughs> this is also a very real situation, right? So right. local law enforcement. Um, now we're you know, happily in Santa Clara County, we're in the sanctuary county. Uh, California is moving to be a sanctuary state, but there are a lot of cities and, and states that um, don't have sanctuary and, and in this situation, the police in those states, uh, in some cases, will be very quick to uh, release names to, to ICE. Um, so, so in this situation, you know, one of the things that, that struck me about this is the, the recognition of AB60. And, and so maybe talk a little bit about that because part of the dynamic is both the dynamic of being in a sanctuary city and also um, having this, the, the right to a, to a driver's license. Yes, a wonderful thing in California that no matter your status, you have the right to go to the DMV, um, Department of Motor Vehicles, and apply for a driver's license. Um, and it, it, it's called an AB, if you don't have a valid social security number, um, you cannot get a regular one, so you apply for a driver's license under this AB60 law that was passed. Um, and um, the only difference between the two would be that the driver's license, the AB60 driver's license would, would have at the, in the top right corner or something that says federal limits apply. Uh, but it's a valid driver's license. People should apply for it. People that do not have one and do not have a valid social security number should apply for an AB60 license so that they're in compliance with our laws in you know, driving motor vehicles on the highway, getting insurance for your car um, and uh, your driving. So everyone should, should go ahead and have it. We, I, the only caveat I would, I would um, make here is that um, if people have had in the past um, problems with uh, applying for a driver's license when they, with false information, they should first consult with an attorney. Um, so mostly this information, everyone should apply if they've never had a driver's license and now the AB, that the AB60 exists, they should go ahead and do it. But if they, before they have had, they have tried to get one or they have had one that didn't have necessarily their right identity or may have had um, false information on it, then they should consult with an attorney first okay. before going into the DMV and applying for one. Right, yes, follow the law. Yes. So, so the, the issue here is, is, that I see is, is that um, the, the police, too, have to know what their limits are. So in this video, you saw you know, one police officer said, oh, well, you know, this person is not cooperating you know, we should turn them over, while the other police officer was saying, no, this is where we are. So it, it's, it's none so of our concern, <laughs> right. the person's immigration status. Yes. Yeah, and, but there was an issue there that, that concerned me that, that I'm concerned with the new approach at the federal level, which is that uh, the people that are uh, convicted of, uh, accused. accused of, or there's a suspicion of, right, which is a whole new... Uh, uh, realm was so ev you know everybody's suspicious right so what does that do to local enforcement and what does that do to people's rights locally 
So if people live in a sanctuary county place, um, immigration, um, immigra local law enforcement doesn't do the job of the federal government in, in calling them up if someone is arrested merely for, a, for, for, some, for some low crime that doesn't pose a risk to the, to the community. Um, so this, 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 this part where um, you, know, you could be deported if you're merely being accused or suspected of having committed a crime applies if you, if you um, fall under the lens of ICE. Mm -hmm. So if, if ICE is looking for you, then people who have, for example, an arrest, and they haven't been convicted yet, they haven't been proven guilty, but they have an arrest, should definitely con con um, try and contact an attorney as soon as possible, both an immigration attorney and a criminal attorney, to try to resolve both issues. Um, for people who uh, live in sanctuary places, though, law enforcement normally doesn't focus on the immigration status of someone, doesn't even try and gather that information, um, unless maybe after someone's been convicted, you know, they've, uh, they've um, um, had, uh, they've executed their sentence, and then upon release, if it's someone that the law enforcement feels is dangerous to the community, they may end up um, calling the federal government um, and giving the federal government the option to pick up the person right. and detain them. Okay. So this, the last video we're going to see is uh, when ICE uh, shows up at someone's workplace. Hi, welcome to Tres Amigos Taqueria. What can I get for you today? Hi, can I have the steak burrito, please? Of course. Go ahead and take a seat, please, while I get that started for you. Damn. Puedes empezar la orden de la señorita, un burrito de asada, por favor. Sí, va a querer el especial del hey, día. Hey, where are you from? I asked you where you're from. I don't need to answer that. Yes, you do. This is a public space. Actually, no. This is a sanctuary restaurant, okay. and you can't sure. come in here and demand information from my patrons or my employees without a warrant. I provide a safe working environment for all of my employees, regardless of national origin or religion. We'll see about that. Dan, try to stay late tonight so that we can walk out together. Also, use the back door for the next couple of shifts so that that agent can try to question you or intimidate you. Okay, thank you so much. Sure, no problem. You just witnessed an interaction between an ICE agent and a business owner. Business owners have the right to request a warrant. The warrant must be a judicial warrant signed by a judge. An administrative warrant signed by an ICE agent does not give ICE the authorization to enter the premises with the purpose of investigating employees or patrons. Regardless of your immigration status, you have the right to remain silent. Remember, do not say anything or sign anything with first, without first consulting with an attorney. So here's a si similar situation to the first video of ICE coming into a social service agency. In this case, it's a regular business. And um, the interesting thing there is that the owner or the manager was very clear about her rights, the rights of her employees, the rights of her customers, and, and um, what the obligation was for ICE in order to uh, have any sort of investigation. And so what's your sense of, um, you know, she used the term sanctuary business, and this is the first time I've heard that, yep. that language. So, so what, is there a movement of sanctuary businesses along with sanctuary cities, sanctuary counties, sanctuary states? Is, is there something to help business owners to understand that they too run a safe place that follows the Constitution? I love that. Um, and, but, but it's not necessary to have to put that label necessarily. If you have a plan and you are committed to protecting the privacy and the rights of your employees and of your patrons, um, that's all you need whether you call it the sanctuary business or not. Um, it helps give, you know, um, a nice um, flair to it, but, but you don't need that. And, um, and it's, as long as I said, as you have a plan, and obviously this business person, business owner did have a plan and did everything right to protect the privacy of her employee. And also the employees knew what to do. In this case, the employee knew what to do. They did not just, you know, blurt out an answer to the question. Someone asks you, where are you from? Immediately you're inclined to answer. Um, and, and in this situation, the person knew that, you know, I have the right to remain silent and it's suspicion that this person is just out of the blue asking me where I'm from. Um, so I think that's, that's great. Um, the other thing I would, I, would, I would point out is that the person did not run. They're, they're in, in the community, been, um, there's been news about these ice raids at workplaces. It's very important that people do not run. 
um, even if they're you know stressed, anxious, um, they don't feel necessarily safe because of, of, of immigration customs enforcement being on the premises. They should not run. And if if um, if they feel like they want to leave, you sh you have the right to ask, can I leave? Do you have a warrant on my name? Am I obligated to stay here? If not, I would like to leave. And, and if you're allowed, then slowly um, um, leave the premises, even if it's your workplace. Um, and I think that's important to remember. Yeah, so again, help people stay calm, uh, avoid the fear, uh, practice and, and, and uh, yeah, don't, don't have run. a plan. <laughs> and have a, have a plan. So with that, you know, one of the things we talked about is the importance of uh, having that plan and families having an emergency plan. Yes. So maybe talk a little bit about what uh, is important for families to have uh, in order for them to be prepared. So let's say ICE comes knocking at, whether it's at your business or at home, and you have a child at school. Um, what do you do? What if you, what if you have a mortgage on your house and, and you're picked up and deported? What do you do? So all of those sorts of situations, what's... We, we, everyone should have a family preparedness plan, right? Doesn't matter whether you're at risk of being deported, you have status, you don't have status. We should all have, if we have young children, if we have obliga financial obligations like that, we should all have a plan. What if I can't come home tomorrow, something happens, God forbid, um, then what do we do, right? So everyone should have a plan and every family should sit down and talk to their children and uh, their spouses, partners, and, um, and make a plan. So in a situation like that, you, families, the person Im implicated in maybe being detained or cannot uh, you know cannot come home that evening let's say you will be more uh, capable of remembering what your rights are and exercising them if you have a plan. If you know it's okay if I don't get home, I'll, I'll need to get in touch with my attorney because I know my children are being taken care of. I've designated a trusted adult who hopefully has status, they're a citizen or legal res permanent resident, who knows that they need to, be, if I can't come home, they will, they will have to pick up my, uh, my children from school. They know that at school there is an emergency contact list and they are on that list and the, the school has authority to release those children to the trusted adult that I've designated. And we, um, the, the wonderful immigration, Immigrant Legal Resource Center has put together such a packet. It's free on their website in several languages. And um, what it has, it's something that's called the caregiver affidavit. Um, that you uh, that the person designated uh, by by the parent to to you know for example take care of the children would sign and date the moment something were to happen and all the information is in there and the schools the hospitals the doctors they have authority to act on that okay. if it's necessary um, so have that plan yes make sure your family is taken care of make sure you're Save money. <laughs> right and and uh, consult with an attorney when you can but know your rights. Yes. So this is Change Lives for Good. Today we've been talking about know your rights when ICE comes knocking. And remember until next time to speak up, reach out, and change lives for good.